Hey everyone, welcome back to Pseudotech and another video about my new NAS. Last week I introduced this computer, which I bought at FreeGeek as I said earlier, and I took some pieces out of it and installed Ubuntu onto it instead of Debian because Debian wasn't working, which is too bad. But since then I have been working quite a bit on turning this into my main primary NAS as opposed to the Raspberry Pi that I was using before. Now the Pi NAS is great and if you'd like to learn more about that you can check out my video which I'll have up in a card right about now. And we basically just set up a Raspberry Pi as a network attached storage device with some USB hard drives and I mean it worked and I was able to back up my videos to it off of my computer for a while. I have two two terabyte drives that were on there and are now in here, one for backup, one for storage, and they were getting filled up and used quite a bit seeing as I shoot the videos with this camera in 4K because I can, so why not? But I was really looking forward to having some faster network speeds, not for editing, but still just for backing up the old files and putting them on there to get them off of this computer, my main computer, which you can't see, it's right over there. Um, so yeah, I've been making some changes, and right now this is currently running Open Media Vault. Now, I looked into FreeNAS, and I would have really liked to do FreeNAS, but if you remember, I only have 2GB of RAM in here, and it's kind of a basic platform. And FreeNAS recommends at least 8GB of RAM, plus like a gig for every terabyte or something like that. So with 4 terabytes of storage on there, that's a lot of RAM to buy. This motherboard and CPU combination probably wouldn't even support it, and if I'm going to go that route and buy a whole bunch of RAM and that sort of thing, I'd kind of like ECC error correcting RAM. Open Media Vault doesn't support as many features as FreeNAS. It does support RAID, but I'm not actually running on this on here. The reason I'm not running RAID is that I feel like with two drives, having one regular drive and one for kind of constant backups and holding them for as long as possible just as like a compressed file, I think that's a better option than having it in something like RAID 1 because it prevents something like a virus or just me straight up going and deleting files on accident from happening a bit better than RAID 1. If I had more drives, I would do a backup and like a RAID 1 or a RAID 5, but since speed isn't a huge issue and the backup just seems more safe, it's just better, you know, whatever. So first I'd like to show you the inside, which I have pimped out a little bit. First thing you'll probably notice is my two two terabyte drives in here. I opened them up from the original casing. They were Seagate drives. You can check out the Pinas video. We also have links for the stuff down in the description below. Um, for some reason, they're actually Samsung drives in Seagate enclosures, which I found really weird. But you know, whatever. Um, so there's there. Let's take this fan off. This fan I actually replaced because um, I thought it looked nicer without these labels and it seems to get some more airflow just to get it pulling it from over here going down onto the CPU before it was sucking it up off of the heatsink. And there's not much area here for the air to come in so here it's getting a nice big breath of air here pushing it down onto the heatsink and then it will kind of create a high pressure zone there which is nice just to reduce the dust. So I have both of these drives plugged in via SATA connectors. I took out the other larger drive, so this space is empty. Maybe I'll put more storage there in the future. And I have this hooked up to the SATA power that was connecting the original 80 gigabyte drive, which was a three and a half inch drive down here. And this is connected via Molex. I just have this little adapter, which I ran out and got. It just adapted as Molex power to regular SATA power because I don't have, this power supply is kind of limited in the connections. I'm actually using every single connection now, I believe. I have this kind of ghetto mounting solution, which, you know, kind of works. It's on some cardboard with some electrical tape, which may make some of you cringe, but as long as I keep it horizontal, it works pretty well. Now, in terms of other storage, I've added quite a bit. The boot drive is coming off of USB, since that just works fine. You know, it works well enough for Open Media Vault. And I have a plugin on Open Media Vault that reduces the amount of reads and write to the USB drive to try to maximize that lifespan, which is kind of nice. I have it plugged in over here um, to this little USB thing, and this is this was a regular USB thumb drive. I took the casing off just to, you know, just I don't need the casing inside this case. 
Um, this was here, so I just took the front panel ones, unscrewed them, and brought them into the case, so it was a nice, clean solution. I still have the SD card reader and compact flash card reader and everything else up here. This is just um, an SD card from my older camera that I still sometimes use for this camera, but it can't it can't hold 4K video, which is fine since I have the 64 gigabyte one that I'm on right now. Um, this is just a little bit faster and more compact than if I were to put like a hard drive. Not as fast as an SSD, which would be nice, but I don't have space for an SSD in here. This is what I use for virtual machines, which I will talk about in a little bit. And that just slots in on the front panel nicely like that. I've changed one more thing, which you might be able to notice, and that is this Ethernet card right here, which I just zoomed in and my aperture got shrunk down. So let me turn up the ISO real quick. There we go. So I have this Ethernet card right here, which I added in. The onboard Ethernet only goes up to 100 megabits per second, which is okay, but this is a gigabit Ethernet card that I bought for about $5, and I just slotted it in there, of course, PCI, and that's what I connect to my router. So now that I've updated all of you on the internals, let's take a look at what the actual software has to offer. So if you go to the Open Media Vault web administration page, you can find the login, you know, just do your stuff, and it'll go ahead and log you in. So I have a couple of things different than what you would see if you set it up for the first time. But this is my main, you know, like control area kind of thing. As you can see, I've got the version here. 3.0 or point whatever is coming out fairly soon, but I'm still on this. There's a beta of the 3 version, but I'm still on the 2, just for stability's sake. Um, as you can see, you've got the dual core processor. This is kind of nice. It shows you the load and memory usage right up top, so you don't have to go in and use HTOP or whatever. I have quite a few servers running right now, as you can see here, but I'll go into those later. And right now I've disabled the onboard Ethernet, so I just have the gigabit Ethernet right here, which is the main one, and then, of course, loop back and stuff like that. And then finally, down here, you can see all of the different shares on the file system. So this is my main boot disk, and as you can see that's it's actually two gigabytes, but it must have been formatted in some weird way. Um, the SD card, which is 16 gigabytes, but only 14 are showing up here. Um, this is for the virtual machines, backup, and main. So the way Open Media Vault works is it's got users, groups, these are of course the regular file permissions, and it's got shared folders, and that is what is taking what is in the file systems. It says I've got file systems here um, that I've set up with different. They're all ext4 since that's just the simplest. Um, but the shared folders would create a shared folder on one of the file systems, and then you would that you would give access of that to a user or a group. So it takes care of all the permissions like that, so you don't have to do, you know, chmod and stuff like that. And then those shared folders can be accessed by various servers that are going to use them. So for example, I have the Apple Filing Protocol, and this is going to allow you to use um, backups natively from Apple devices through Time Machine. And then over here I've got the shares for the different things. That, and, and then over here I've got the shares, which are reference the shared folders that I've set up, which I'm not going to show just for security sake. Um, then I've got a few other servers. These are all the available ones, but I don't have all of them. So for example, I have OpenVPN here, which I'm not going to show up again for security. Um, SSH, which that's on. I'm actually going to disable that for now since I don't need it right now. I had it enabled for some configuration that I was doing earlier, but I like to keep only the minimal things enabled on servers just because Otherwise, it's using up resources and you know, opening holes and stuff like that. And finally, I have VirtualBox, which uses the virtual machines, which apparently are not running right now. I don't know. But as you can see, the VM directory is on the virtual machine, VirtualBox, VMs, 
shared folder. This is a shared folder and it says it's on the SD card, which is how it should be. Now, a lot of these things are not out of, will not come out of the box and a lot of them are through plugins, which is kind of nice. So for example, I have right here, the backup plugin installed and there are a lot of other plugins available. All of them, of course, free. Not all of them are available right out of the box, but you will have to upload a, pro a plugin file from omv-extras.org, which I can't quite understand like how official it is, but it's referenced multiple times on the Open Media Vault actual website, so they seem to kind of be, maybe they're managed by the same people in just slightly different groups, I'm not sure. But from here you can get a whole bunch of other plugins, and when you enable one of these and save it, the actual plugin will show up here. So for example, that's how I got the OpenVPN server, which is right here. You can also get an OpenVPN access server, which you know works, but I prefer, but I prefer just to have the keys. And here's VirtualBox. I also, of course, have the Samba file server, the SMB CIFS, which is mainly for me and my Windows machine. So that's about all I have to say for this video. Um, I just thought I'd show what I have for my current NAS solution since I took a while to set it up and I think it works very well for me. Maybe there are some ideas or some techniques in here that you can learn and apply to your own kind of life and you know, figure out your own NAS sort of things. Either way, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.